go through the team news in goal is Mark Howard. And fullback Anthony Ford will make his first appearance at the race course. Callum O'Fadgen at left back with a familiar back three of Ben Tozer, Aaron Hayden and Max Clueth. The midfield three made up of Tom O'Connor, James Jones and the captain Luke Young with Paul Mullin and Ollie Palmer leading the line as we've become so accustomed to across this season. For Macclesfield FC, Marcelo Pitaluga in goal. He's been very impressive for the Siltman since signing on loan from Liverpool. Jacob Hansen, Brandon Lee, Lewis Fenton and a trialist make up the back four. Laurent Mendy, Neil Bands in the midfield with Neil Kenji, Alex Curran, James Berry and Tom Clare up front for the Siltman. And it should be an enthralling encounter and a first opportunity for fans to get back inside the race course since the Grimsby playoff semi final last season. Here it comes, <laughs> coming in your box. So this is a this is where the teams differ in size, I think. And it comes in. Palmer gets the header. Hayden gets there, miss kicked, and a great save by Pitaluga. To deny, I think it's Max Clewith in the end. I mean, I it thought when that there. landed at Aaron Hayden's feet, there was only one place it could have gone, and in the end, he completely missed it. That's right. We talked about how much of an animal he is in that in the both boxes, but he, he just swings at it, and misses it, hits it with his knee. What a save that is, by the way. Point blank, makes himself big, gets a strong arm on it, and up over the bar. Clueth would be disappointed with that, to be fair. And it looks like it'll be Luke Young to swing in the corner. Comes at the near post. Palmer wins the header, and it's one 0 to Wrexham. A brilliant delivery by Luke Young. And you mentioned that Macclesfield looked a little bit small at times when he got a beast like Holly Palmer in the box. It's going to be difficult to stop him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Wrexham last year, the back end of the season, they were built on set pieces, long throws and corners. And I mentioned the size of them. Robbie Savage mentioned the size of them. And that's key. And, and Holly Palmer, great run to the near post. You've got real quality in Luke Young's delivery. And when it's like that, you do very, very well. It doesn't matter how big you are to stop it. Uh, and like you said, he, he's, he's a danger in the box, isn't he? He, he works works himself really hard and like you say to get 20 odd goals in a, in any season is a, is a good tally and a good a good return and he'll be looking for more I'm sure in in the season to come as Ford crosses gets that one and Fatin just heading by at the back post that's Brandon Lee plays a nice one too as he tries to get himself forward Luke Young again with a strong tackle and James Jones can advance Mullen finds himself in space gets a shot away great save James Jones with the follow-up, and it's just him. 2-0 to Wrexham. And the move that started with James Jones ended with a James Jones goal as well. Yeah, well, it's the pressure from Ford that really starts it off. He, he engages the press to start with. Jones comes in, and Young come in to take the ball off him. And it's a pass from Jones to Mullin. Mullin decides, I'm going to take it first time, just outside the box. It's a great strike, very similar to the goal he scored against Stockport in the league at the end of last season. But it's a really strong hand by the keeper. But James Jones does unbelievably well to reverse the ball in on his weaker side. It's a great save. And this one, to reverse it, keeper thinks he's going in the near post. And it's a really, really cheeky finish across the back, across the keeper's momentum. He can't change direction back. And it's a good finish, 2-0. Does well to beat Max Clues to the ball. That's a brilliant pass by Callum Fadgen into Paul Mullen on the right-hand side. It's slightly isolated players coming forward. Looks to take on Fenton and does so. Max Clueth arriving at the back post. But it goes back to Anthony Ford. Ford's cross first time. Clueth misses the header. Oli Palmer there and just hits the side net him. Sees Dan to pick up the ball. I think that's maybe been the key factor for Macclesfield in the way that they are getting forward. It's because of Dan's and Lauren Mendy. The captain can get forward, get a shot away. But drags it wide. But it does seem like Macclesfield are getting on the ball and more and need a bit more space because of the movement of Neil Dan's. As Neil Kenji tries to get the one on, run on McFadden, a great ball across into James Berry. And just a poor touch from him. Which Mark Howard gobbled. And in really good position by Mark Howard there, being alert. And I said, he said in one of his interviews in his early days of signing for the club that he likes to be commanding in his area, and he did just that then. The pass was just a little bit heavy. You know, the cross field pass from, from Menji, Kenji, Kenji, sorry. Uh, and it was Berry who had to take on the outside of his foot. And just unfortunately, the touch was just a bit big, but like you say, Howard ready to spring and pick it up. And that is half time at the race course ground. It's finished Wrexham 2, Macclesfield FC nil. A good half for Phil Parkinson's side. And out for a corner. It's 
Luke Young can swing the ball in again. In good position, Aaron Hayden. We've seen that one before. <laughs> there you go, straight off the training ground once again. We've talked about how powerful they are at set pieces and again the quality of Young, it's right on the money. Just it's just asking for your centre arse to go and attack it. You know, it, you're not asking for a perfect ball, he's just putting it in an area where you know that there's gonna be Palmer, uh, Toza and Hayden. And he puts it right on the money, just five you know, four or five yards out from the box. Just having a look in there, I think it's Clue in on the keeper does a great job of pinning him in, doesn't let him come and, and punch it. And it's just a, a simple if you're in the, if you're a, if you want to attack it and want to score, then go you go and help yourself because it's a buffet ball, isn't it? It's one of those and it's where toes are right on top of them. It's almost a no man's land for a goalkeeper, isn't it? They don't know whether quite can you come for it, can you not? Clue blocks him off. Well that's right. Well that he can't come because of Clue's position. And he does really well. He stands right in his way, he doesn't foul him, but just makes it really really difficult to come around him and if he's going to come around him he's going to be out of position and uh, he does neither and ends up having the ball played and Harry Hayden just loses the ball there Tom Clare blazing it into the coppers Ford on the right hand side Luke Young showing for him but he goes inside himself and he's brought down by Lee bit of a reckless challenge there and it's anyone's guess I think it'll be Tom O'Connor to strike it on goal He's the one that runs up. Tommy kind of strikes one just over the bar. Toes are now into Clue with Wrexham just enjoying a nice spell of possession here. Not really contested by Macclesfield. They aren't particularly pressing too high now. They're sat back again. That's right, setting their shape. And this is where I think Wrexham sometimes just struggle a little bit with their movement and, and opening up and creating opportunities when teams are, are set and in their slots. I think they're just the relationships and a bit more movement the ball goes into the box headed down by Tom O'Connor beat Hansen in the air and that's 4-0 to Wrexham a really good header by Tom O'Connor it looked like Hansen had that one all day long but he got right. in front of him and it's Wrexham for Macclesfield nil well he's had to generate the pace off the off the cross because the cross is a loop one he's put a little bit of loft on it and it's dropped in there and he's out muscled Bentham I think it is and he's managed to generate a little bit of pace and direct it into the bottom corner really good but that's how Wrexham I think will need to play the need to gonna get it wide and in behind and create those opportunities to put the ball in the box and then if you can get people like O'Connor and Palmer in the box that's a really good header because it's not an easy one to generate that pace off that type of cross Luke Young into Paul Mullin, Mullin finds himself in space drives at the Macclesfield defence he's got O'Connor with him finds it to Palmer Palmer can he get the shot away he shoots and just wide to Mark Howard and just another loose pass from Howard there as James Berry's got a good chance to go one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and a good save by Howard well recovered all in all it's been again a good performance by Wrexham and, and minutes in the legs which is so crucial yeah, going yeah. into next weekend well Macclesfield haven't caused any real problems to, to Wrexham's back three unless Wrexham have caused them themselves and here comes Paul Mullen in the area he gets a shot away and it's just narrowly wide Next Saturday's game in the Vanarama National League kicks off against Eastleigh with another packed out race course. As full time arrives here at the race course, it's Wrexham 4, Macclesfield 0. A really good performance by Wrexham in the end. Did everything that they needed to do. And it's puts them in good stead ahead of that fixture next weekend. One more game to go against Carnarvon, where an 11 will go there. But Phil Parkinson overall will be pleased with that, won't he, Andy Morrell? Yeah, I think he'll be pleased. Clean sheet, four goals, a couple of set pieces come off. You know, they've been practicing on the training ground. And 90 minutes into six, seven of the of the first teamers that, that may be starting next next week. So, yeah, I think he'll be relatively pleased. Obviously, we'll want to score more goals and, and play a bit more attractive football and, and intensity and expanse. But that will hopefully come. But, yeah, I think, I think he'll be... They'll be pleased with the performance because that feels potential little cheeky banana skin, isn't it, in pre-season? It's one of those games that you want to get right, do a professional job and get everything you want out of it. And I suspect that's exactly what happened. Great to see the reception by the supporters for the players as they make their way over to the Macron stand to take their applause. And interestingly, some of the players that haven't played, some of the youth players there are getting a kick out as well now and getting a workout as well. Yeah, coming onto the pitch, they'll have a little bit of a training session. I would have thought here as everybody's come to the game but 4,000 people 
in the ground for a, for a pre-season game is is astonishing and um, I'm sure that those fans will have enjoyed the game and will be really really looking forward to to next Saturday and really getting behind this team for a massive massive promotion push and a season ahead